This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. I'm Dr. Jimmy Stewart, host of the original Southern Remedy, the show where I answer your medical questions. Subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy on any podcasting app. From MPB Think Radio, this is Fix It 101, the home improvement show to help you do it yourself. I'm Lacey Alexander here with my friends Pim Pibus from Inspect It Like a Girl and Jeff Salmons from Houseworks. Many DIY projects start with a spark or an idea or after binging your favorite home makeover show. However, some projects can come with a risk, whether that's of harming yourself or getting into some legal trouble. So no matter how inspired you are, remember safety first. Today we look at common DIY injuries and how you can avoid them and also what projects require a permit before you start working what permission do you need from who before you start that project good morning pam and jeff good morning good morning any uh cautionary injury tales to start Mm. us off oh golly so of course (laughs) you know this is fun this is actually pretty funny um i go as the listeners know i'm going to pilates now which has done wonders for my back Wow. You know, the older I get, the more, stre- if you stretch, supposedly. So anyway, that's a whole different thing. So I'm doing that. Well, the Pilates instructor finds out that I'm an inspector. and Sure. Anyway, so she sends me this text last week about how it took her three hours to change her air filters at her house. Mm. What? Because builders, Jeff... <laughs> Here put, it comes. Put the return <laughs> in a ten foot ceiling. Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh boy. That's that's how my house is, is made up. Yeah. So it didn't take me three hours. How you go how you gonna right. get up there to change that <laughs> filter? <laughs> and, uh, I would use a ladder. Yeah, exactly. I've got a little, got a little step stool. And yeah. how do most Injuries. Where do they occur for the homeowner? Most injuries, they, and they, this is they statistical. Fell off the ladder. They fall off the ladder. That's that's a short ladder to be falling off of to injure yourself. Uh, well, no. If it's a ten foot ceiling, you're going up pretty high. Oh yeah, you said ten foot. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're going up there, and so you have to get a tall ladder. And so she goes this whole thing about how the filter didn't fit. She gets up there, <laughs> and the filter didn't fit. So she gets down. She's got to go back and get another one. And then she had her. Husband and her son spotting her as she goes mm. up on this ladder. Oh, my goodness. And I was like, oh, man. But <laughs> statistically, most uh, injuries within the home and DIY projects are falls off of ladders. Fun fact. Jeff? I would agree with that. Um, I don't think it's ever a good idea to get on your roof unless you are very confident about getting on your roof. Well, I don't even think if you're confident you should get up there. You could be like overconfident. <laughs> well, that is that that's a good good statement. And and you know there there's always and I've said this for years, do what you are comfortable doing. I, I think painting is 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 safe. Unless um, it's a stairwell. <laughs> um, oh yeah. You know, I I, I think that uh, you could advance to installing a ceiling fan. There, there's a lot of things the homeowner can do. Um, I've got a somewhat tragic story, actually, um, and I will tell it. I've told it before. Customer of my, a customer of mine calls, wants some work done, and for one reason or the other, uh, this particular individual decided to work on his garage door himself. Mm. Long story short, he ended up in the emergency room with one finger mm. severed. Ooh. See, I knew and, it, I knew that was going to come up. And, <laughs> and I knew there was a lost appendage somewhere. A, <laughs> a gash in his head, and and mm. and the, the garage doors are very dangerous. The spring on that garage door is extremely, extremely tight. dangerous. Yes. Oh my God! Yes. And you really need to know what you're doing now. You know, I don't want to bring gloom and doom to the show, but but there are things that homeowners can do themselves, and there are things that homeowners should not do themselves. Yeah, and that's one of them. Right. So well, right. over the holiday, I had a family member who came in with a boot on his leg, mm-hmm. and mm. I'm talking to him, and he's like, "Yeah, I went down, and my dad had a lot of leaves in the gutter, and I thought I'd help him there out." There you go. And mm. came yep. right off the. And this yep. guy's in his forties. Yep. 
It so. don't. It don't matter how much money you save if if you die afterwards. Yeah, so we might as well just hire well, somebody. Well, a handyman's cheaper than a hospital yes. visit or the deductible, as I yes. like to say. Yes. Well, you know the the thing is, if if you get in your car and you go every day and you're a nurse or a doctor or a banker or work in a grocery store. Um, you're not real experienced getting on a ladder and getting on your roof and cleaning gutters. So true. Mm-hmm. It, it, nothing wrong with that. Hire someone that does that every day. Right. W- would, you you wouldn't give yourself open heart surgery, would you? No. Just because you can go buy a scalpel. Right, okay. Right. Then why would you clean your own gutters out? Right. Call someone that does what they do, and you'd go do what you do. There you go. And but, there's no shame in that. And you can Absolutely think it not. through. You know, if you look at something, what are all the things that can go wrong here? <laughs> yeah, right. Give me a pros and cons list before yeah, you get on that if, roof. If I get into that. And then don't. Simple things. Let, let's just say there's a squirrel in the gutter and it scares you and, and you fall off the ladder and break a leg. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or you get a text. <laughs> yeah. From the squirrel. <laughs> yeah. Right. You're going up the ladder and all of a sudden the phone goes off and you yeah. got to check that text message. And now the squirrel's yelling at you. And <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, well, this has been a great intro. We have, or I have, as your producer, neglected my emails. So how about we, we read some emails real Let's quick? Let's do it. So this is from Nancy. She says, hey, guys, I'm in the same place as Jeff. I plan to sell my home later this spring. Jeff actually told me he sold his house. I had a home inspection, and now I'm trying where to start. The summary includes 18 safety hazards, 69 general, 35 minor. Should I hire a general contractor for all of it? I would, you know, that's a broad. That's a broad that's, yeah, that's a big question. That's you a know, big question. if you're if you're working with a realtor, they usually know the things that would be expected for you to do. Mm-hmm. You have to remember that what inspectors are doing is they're trying to they're telling you everything about the house. That's right. It doesn't mean that everything has to be addressed. Sure. And so I don't know that I would hire a GC to do everything. I would ask the se- the buyer, what do you want done? Yeah. Right. And if they want everything, then what I would do is probably sit down with somebody who is experienced with that and fix the things that are necessary. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think it's unreasonable to try to fix everything. I just think it's unreasonable. I, I do, too. And, and you know, it, 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 I, I like Pam's comment. Sit down with the buyer and say, "Okay, let's let's dissect this list. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's a roof issue. Eh, probably ought to be corrected. Uh, and if you have enough of those things, and you don't want to play contractor because you are the the doctor or the nurse and don't have time, then right. I, then hire a a general contractor that can go get the roofer, the electrician, the plumber, and take that responsibility off of the homeowner." Sure. Um, I like it. I think it looks better to the buyer that a general contractor has handled it. Sure. Stands behind the work and and is is in a position to explain what 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 has been handled and what has not. Someone you can call with questions. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. All right. One more before break. This is from Terrence. He says he has a quick question for you guys. He was up in his attic the other day and noticed that some of the wood decking has holes in it. By the looks of it, it is where knots in the wood were. He can see straight through to what he hopes is the underlayment between the decking and the shingles. The house was built in 2010-ish, so the roof is between 13, 14 years old. Should he be worried? Should he patch those holes? And what would be the best way to do that? You know, I bet what happened is that at some point in time, if the house was built in 10 and it's around here, there was a hailstorm. And so they came in and they popped because when you're pulling nails out and it's got to be OSB. Yeah. If it was built in 10. Sure. Which is a what what is that? Ori- uh, oriented strand board. Yeah. So it's not even a solid piece of wood. So it no, would, it's wood chips. Glued wood together. chips. It would pop out like that. The only time I would be concerned is if I see a nail coming through it, Mm -hmm. because at that point, that nail is not connected to anything. That's right. And so how would you fix that, Jeff? That's a great question. Well, you could always uh, come in and put a put a piece of plywood between your um, between your uh, roof rafters and nail it in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm I'm kind of like you. I'm not uh, I'm not overly concerned with it at this point. Mm -mm. Now, when it is time, because everything is time dated, when it is time to get a new roof, I, I would definitely address it at that point. Yeah, the next time the roof comes off, and this is the way roofers work, and I'm very familiar with this having just done this in the last year, 
is that they're going to look at all that decking, and if it needs to be within your bid, is there will replace so much wood, and then after that, you have to start paying for it. And my house was an older home, so I knew I was going to have to pay for extra. I just knew that was going to happen. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't fool with I wouldn't even think about it until you get a new roof. Now, if it ends up leaking at some point, mm. you know, if, if water starts coming through at that nail penetration, and, and now that you kind of know where everything is, and I point them out in home inspections, and I give the same advice that Jeff just gave, yeah, is that we just want to monitor these areas. Now, if it's egregious and it looks like, oh, yeah, that's going to leak the next time we get a rain, mm. then you need to do something about it. I'm wondering, now, here's another thing. So walking around in your attic, folks, is dangerous. <laughs> you hear that, Terrence? <laughs> I mean, it is dangerous. So be very, very careful. If it's within your reach, I actually, if it were my house, I would probably, and I may get chewed up for this, come in with some of that um, spray sealant on the back side of it, just where the nail is. To try to seal that up a little bit so yeah, that it doesn't leak there. Yeah, it would, wouldn't be horrible as long as you can reach it. Yeah, if you can reach it. But if it's way up there and you're going to have to, like, build a platform to get up there, Terrence, find something else to spend your time on. <laughs> <laughs> or good. hire someone else. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, don't. Good, good point. Even we, hiring yeah. somebody because if you fall off a ladder in an attic, you've got a whole other set of problems. <laughs> yeah. My, my sister and I, our rooms were upstairs in the house we grew up in, and there were little doors into our attic in our rooms, and we were were strictly told to never go in those stores. So my mother echoes your sentiment about going up, going up in the attic. Oh, ma'am. yeah. Yeah. And that's one. I tell you something here, Lacey. We always recommend whenever we're on a second floor and we know children are going to be living in that house. If it is an access door with a lock on it, mm. make sure it's locked. Mm hmm. Keep, keep that door locked at all times, because I'm the child that if you tell me not to go in there that I'm waiting for the time, the moment that I can go in. Right. <laughs> I yeah. mean, that's just the kind of kid I was. As soon as you ain't looking. Yeah. I'm falling through that. Uh, what do you mean I can't go in there? What's in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Christmas decorations. That's what's in there. <laughs> to get back on the subject of DIY safety, you two, what was your last injury on the job? Well, I did. <laughs> this was this was nuts. Um, I was uh, checking... Um, for our next inspection after after uh, slab would be a framing in mechanicals so i got out of my truck and during this stage there's there's debris there's pieces of plywood and cut off two bys and and so so on i caught the corner of a piece of osb mm-hmm. and and i went down it i'm i'm it Ooh. was it was almost slow motion it was just <laughs> Bam! I was so thankful that it the dirt was a little, a uh, soft, a little mud kind of. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I just kind of laid there for a minute, like, what in the world just happened? <laughs> and what what happened? I was in a hurry. You know, I got out of my truck with a kind of a fast walk, and that corner of that piece of piece of OSB caught the front of my shoe, and next thing I know, I'm on the ground. Oh my gosh, Jeff! Yeah, of was course. there anybody around? Oh yes. <laughs> Did you get a standing ovation? Yeah. Yes, right. yes. Any photos <laughs> taken that yes. we can, that Pam and I uh, can see later? They, uh, you know, listen. <laughs> If you fall when you're 20, no one does anything. Right. When you fall when you're 60, uh-huh. every, everybody over. comes, are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> Call 911 for Jim. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Just help me up. Yeah, right. Oh, um, golly. Now, mine wasn't nearly as exciting, but last year I was, um, and you know, Inspectors, if you want to wonder what we do, I mean, it, it's we're going. I get all my steps in. That is true. Whenever I'm inspecting. And my inspections last anywhere between, my average inspection is three and a half, four hours long. Okay? So I'm going, we were laughing about that. that we had some friends that went with me down to Fairhope this weekend, and we were laughing about, you know, I got to go up the stairs and turn the water on. I got to go down the stairs, and, you know, mm-hmm. then I got back up the stairs, and then I've got to get the ladder out. And anyway, it's just a lot going on. So I was at a house over in, um, I can't remember where I was. Vicksburg, I think. Anyway, I was I was out of town, and I'm just walking across the driveway, just just 
you know, and I wasn't in a hurry. Right. I was just walking across, and all of a sudden, my knee popped. Oh, Ooh, Lord. And I was like, I just stopped mid. Yeah. Mother of God. <laughs> <laughs> right. It hurt so right. bad. Well, now I'm hobbling. The rest yeah. of the, exactly. you know, and I was just running and gunning this summer. Yep. By the time I got to the doctor, mm. I had, um, anyway, long story short, I had to have my knee scoped in November, mm, but mm-hmm. this happened like in June, mm. but I just, I didn't have, so the whole time, and let me tell you, when you get, uh, and a lot of folks, I have found out this is not unusual. If you get what they call debris in your knee, it will catch in the joint Huh. And it never tells you when that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. And so I'd be walking along in an inspection and then just stop and mm. cuss profusely. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And I, you know, I always laugh about it. I hope, and this, I love the advent of, you know, people who monitor their homes. I hope you're watching me. I really right, do. Right. I want you to see everything that I do. That I have done for you yeah, today. Well, and this, just see how hard that I'm working. Yeah. And so I, I just got tickled if anybody was watching at that point when I just stop in the middle of a stride and start cussing. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully their children weren't watching with them. They learned some well, new words, Pam. Do you know I tell people all the time whenever I have a crawl space, and I had one this weekend, I, I went down and saw some folks down in Parkinson. So... Um, shout out to um, Elvira and Chris down there. Stopped down and checked out their crawl space, but they had their grandchild there. Mm-hmm. And I said, now I'm going into your crawl space, so there was cussing involved. If you need to take that child somewhere. Else. Yeah, right. You're going to hear it underground. Uh, yeah, because when I'm crawling on my hands and knees, and the thing that gets me, and I told them this, are these crazy I don't know, Jeff, you've, if you've ever seen them, but they're the ugliest looking grasshoppers I've ever seen. Uh-uh. And they live under the house. Right. So I'll be crawling along and all of a sudden one right in front of me will go up. No. And it just scares me to <laughs> Golly, I hate bugs. Oh, man. I well, hate them. If you hate bugs, don't crawl under a house because yeah. there's plenty <laughs> no, no of kidding. them no down kidding. there. Bugs and spiders. So and, Jeff's injury oh, yeah. tale. All kind of critters. Yeah. Jeff's injury tale is to, you know, not go too fast. Your injury tale is to not go too fast. I'm seeing a theme with you <laughs> right. experienced folks. You think you can just fly through it, huh? Well, my multitasker is not as good. I turned 62 yesterday, and um, I have decided that I need Happy to focus birthday. on one thing. <laughs> Happy birthday, Pam. Thank you, thank you, thank the you. The Pam Birthday Show, we're talking about injuries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. So we've talked about, you know, Falling off a roof and ladder, y'all would say that's the most common with D- DIY stuff. Something that I'm really curious about is people getting shocked when trying to do DIY stuff like electrocuted. What are, what's, a, what's a way you can avoid that? What's a way you can protect yourself from that kind of injury? Hire an electrician. <laughs> yeah, not working on that stuff. Not working on the electrical. You know, s- surprisingly, you don't, you don't really hear of a lot of people getting shocked. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because, I, you know, I think that most people, majority of people, understand that electricity will hurt if it's on when you touch it. Sure. So, you know, and and the the device to tell you if it is hot or not is very inexpensive. Mm. And the ability to cut that off is very simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with those things, I think the average homeowner says, okay, I'm going to cut the switch. I'm going to cut the breaker and I'm going to check it. Yeah. Uh, It's 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 really getting up there and falling off the ladder is is (laughs) is the problem. It really is. Because a ceiling fan, folks, if you hadn't done it recently, those son of a guns are heavy on a a work comp um, fee base. Electrician is is pretty low in comparison to a painter, which is on a ladder, mm-hmm. a cleaner is on a ladder, a roofer. A roofer. The, those tasks are relatively expensive sure. compared to the electrician. Mm. Um, and you can change out. I mean, just keep in mind the black wire is the one you want to avoid. <laughs> yeah. The and, black wire is the hot wire. It should be. Yeah. It should be, unless it's if there's something wrong up the circuit. But, you know. You need- and, and, and during the whole time during home construction, th- there's no power to these wires. Right. 
Yeah, you know, sure. It only happens at the end. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And if a homeowner wants to come in and do something, Jeff's so right. Just go find the circuit and, and then have the tool that tells you that it's the, exactly. that you've cut off the right one. Right. And you, you got to use, speaking of tools, you got to use the right tools, too. You can't, you know, you can't go into a situation like that without some rubber on your pliers or anything like that. Well, if you turn the power off, it really doesn't matter. Mm. But, you know, you can buy these little electrical kits, and I have one that I've had. I bet that thing's 30 years old, but mm. it's got the wire cutter in there and the, the thing that, that scrapes off the coat, the That's right. the cover on the wire so that I can, you know, make a good connection. The thing, and we've talked about this before, whenever you get into electrical, you can buy an outlet now, and they've got these little stab things in the back where you don't have to put the wire around the screw. Right. But every electrician you talk to is going to tell you to I use d- the screw yeah and not I, use that stab yeah, it's it's not a good connection because if it let's say you put it back in there and it's not connected well it'll start arcing that's and right. now you got a house fire great that's great speaking of injuries yeah. might as well burn yourself yeah. while you're down there yeah well i've had an outlet burn up um in my house and i wasn't about to try to fix that so i had an electrician come in and evaluate that and fix good that for, for you. me good for you pam knowing yeah. your limits yeah I, yeah and that's it you just it is know your it limits. is it's it's not it's not about saving the the um you know the hundred dollars uh i had a customer um that called me out wanted me to uh, clean the roof uh full of pine needles and get under the house and do some work and we we talked about it and i gave him a price and and he thought it was too expensive and he got on the roof unfortunately fell off mm-hmm. so it's it's you, you you have to know when to say no mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. it's not worth the little bit of money that you're going to save Mm. Cheaper than a deductible. Yeah, he's he's spending money now. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Let's go back to our email questions. Uh, This is a pretty good one from Madison. When renovating a home and it needs just about everything redone, what should you prioritize? Hmm. Well. I think it depends. I I do, too. I, I I would... chop it up in um banks of dollars Mm. you know phase one two and three how much money can you spend comfortably well i can spend x sure then let's let's do phase one let's get it out of the way then we'll go to now another way you can look at that let's let's say i am simply going to change floor and paint sure obviously i would paint first then I would change my floors. Well, and something you can do, and Jeff and I actually work together on some of these projects. I'll go in and do a very comprehensive home inspection. Right. And then Jeff can look at that home inspection report and tell you what it's going to cost to do everything in there. And then what I do with clients is that I'll give them a list of this is what you should do first. This is what you should do second. Like I did one uh, over in Bellhaven a couple of weeks ago. And the floor next to the shower was rotten. And I was like, well, unless you want to be taking a shower in your crawl space, that's, you need to do that first. Sure, yeah. <laughs> sure. Right, right. And then you can, you know, these are the other things. So, you know, maybe whenever you've got a situation like that, if you really want to know how to eat the elephant, get <laughs> an, uh, an inspector in there to take a look at it and tell you what they think should be done. And, you know, that, yeah, that's, that's a great idea. And it kind of takes a little pressure off of us. I want the customer coming to me with the list and telling (laughs) me, here's what you need to do, Jeff, telling me what they prefer. Right. And then if I see an issue with that, I can bring that up. But, you know, most of the time I'm going to follow the the, the, the letter of the homeowner, I want to do this, this, and this in this order. Sure. And I'll guarantee you, if the house needs everything, there's going to be a surprise. Oh, <laughs> yeah, most definitely. That's true. Because <laughs> if it hasn't been worked on in a while, something's under there. There's a surprise. Yeah, something's, something's hanging out in there. Let's do one more and then we'll break. This is from Misty. She says she's a new homeowner of a home that has old single pane windows on what seems like zero insulation, trying to replace and refill, not having much luck, lives in Brandon. She's installed a storm door and have shrink wrapped the windows while she tries to make a plan. Any ideas? Any help? Love the show. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm 
changing those windows out to a virgin vinyl window. Yeah. They're they're um, they're very cost effective, uh, relatively simple to install, and uh, it brings great value to your home, uh, both on a resale and on a on a uh, energy level. Energy level, um, you can start saving on your on your uh, power bills. I have a, um, one of the reasons I went down to Fairhope was to help some folks with an older cottage that was moved to a, a location, and this thing was cool. I mean, it was just cool, and it had the old double hung pulley ah, windows, the wood window, wood window, single pane. I'm telling you, they were awesome, nice, and um, zero, zero. Um, um, insulation value, but but n- yeah. nice. And so the homeowner really doesn't want to get rid of those windows. So mm. I was going to kind of help with some ideas, and I saw some awesome things on YouTube on how you can, in these older houses where owners want to really preserve that, where there are some solutions to sealing these windows, and one of them was a shrink wrap um, and you can the homeowner could build it, and this guy did this whole thing on how to build it. So there are some ways. I'm kind of you know Jeff and I, he he wants a new window. I'm looking at a way to save it. I sure. figured it out at my house what I ended up doing, and I've got old single pane windows. Is that I've got these really show enough thick insulated curtains. And when it gets super cold, I just keep the curtains yeah. closed, and my house is toasty. All right. Well. Hope I mean, we helped you out, Misty. Yeah, you, there, you can go one or the other. And Jeff, just for the just for her sake, how much can you expect per window on something like that? Is say if she installed it, if if she hired somebody to install a window, what? I'm I'm going to budget six hundred bucks a window. A window, ish. Yeah. So that know. gives you an idea. Yeah. You know, and eventually I will do that. I mean, it's That's just right. not been on my priority list. Sure. You know, I had other things. You, know, my house needed everything. And so I've come in, I've changed all my plumbing lines, all my sewer lines. I've changed the electrical. I've done, I've got a new roof now. I've done the foundation. So eventually I'm working my way to the windows. There you go. Yeah, that's, which is a natural progression. Yeah. So. James in Houston, Mississippi has been waiting patiently. James, you are on the air. What's going on, man? How are you? Hi. Now, uh, you doing good, James? How are you this morning? I have a question about, I guess I'm off topic, but about ceramic space heaters. Okay. Are they, are they, are they safer than the other kind of space heaters? Do they burst into flames less <laughs> likely? I'm not a space heater expert. I, me me um, neither. I've I, got them. I've got those. Um, I, I, I know we don't use them anymore. Yeah, well, but, I do. Well, they sell new ones in the big box stores, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I use, I've got those radiant heaters that yeah, plug in yeah. um, that I will put. And then I got one, the coolest one ever, that I've got on the wall in my bathroom, in my primary bedroom. So, you know, but as far as a ceramic heater, I think the idea is that you just don't want to use it all the time. Right. <laughs> you know, it's a temporary type thing. And um, what I do, James, because I did have a heater that um, caught an outlet on fire because my house is older. What I do is I do check the cord. So I will hold that cord to make sure it's not hot. If the cord is hot, unplug it. Mm-hmm. Be cold for a oh, second. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point um, because now what Pam's talking about, the current running through that cord, if it's a small cord, uh, can get hot quick and melt the... the It'll melt the casing, it'll melt the plug, it'll Mm. melt the outlet, which will cause arcing, which will cause a fire. Mm. So, you know, um, I would say depending on the age, I'm not going to use a a plug-in heater that's over five or ten years old. I'm just not. Regardless of... Yeah. Ceramic or not. Yeah, I'm just yeah. going to get a new one. But, I got you. You know, um, I, I haven't heard of any, James. Have you had problems with yours? No, I just, I just, I know the space heaters in general you need to be careful with. And, but, the, you know, the ceramic heater, the case doesn't get nearly as hot. But, That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, no. 
I live in an old house with small rooms and low ceilings, so it just it just barely warms up enough to keep me comfortable. Yeah. And I, and I didn't realize how smart I was for hold, for checking out, but I, I hold the cord and I hold. Yeah. The cord. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you want to do that because that's where okay. you'll have the problems, especially if it's an older home. And I think probably people with older homes are the ones that are using these little plug-in probably, heaters. Probably. Probably. You know, because those houses are drafty. Um. You know, mine is not as drafty because I have sealed the heck out of it. And in my primary bedroom, I put in, I did re- replace that window. I've got one of those glass block inserts there for the window. So, and I've done a lot of thermal imaging in my house, so I know where the drafts are. I think we probably have about three and a half, four more weeks before we're not going to need a heater anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's or maybe tomorrow. That's, that's what I'm <laughs> counting on, James. <laughs> Well, that makes me feel that my house, my house was built with those heat, the, the electric heaters in the walls. Yes, and they, yes. And I learned that those things can turn themselves on and off. Yes. Uh, yeah, they're haunted. I don't, I, don't, they're, I don't use them anymore. No, so. uh uh-uh. Yeah, those old things, you know, as Jeff says it all the time, everything's got shelf life. And so, yeah, those wall furnaces, we actually will disclaim those in a home inspection whenever I see them there. And I can remember, you know, at my grandmama's house up there in Greenwood, there was a, a a space heater on the wall in the bathroom, and they'd go in there and light that thing up. And, you know, Christmas, we'd go up there. Of course, I'm a child. I didn't know. So I hung my towel in front of it because I was thinking, you know, it'd be great to have a warm towel whenever I get out of the bathtub. Bam. Yeah, it was warm. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> it was charred. Yeah, just I, before catching on fire. Right. right. Yes. I'm telling you, I was a hazard as a child. Yeah, I'm sure I you just were. was. Well, James, we hope we helped you out this morning, buddy. You helped me out a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Let's keep it going on the phone lines. James, thanks for calling in. Let's switch over now to Georgia in Hattiesburg, who's got a question about replacing a tub. Georgia, good morning. What's going on? I'm interested in what advice they have for someone wanting to replace a tub with a walk-in shower. The house is 40 years old. Okay. We we, we, we do it all the time. Um, it's... Uh if um, that you have some sort of wall surface coming down on top of your tub, of course, that, that has to come off. Uh, your drain is either a right or a left hand, so we would get a, a right or a left hand uh, a drain. Now, um, if you're slab on grade, you will still have a little bit of a lip, if you will, getting into the shower. But, uh, yes, ma'am, it's, it's very doable. We, we do them all the time. There's a lot of different type of units, I guess, different quality, different thickness. There are. It really is. It's just like anything else. Do you do your research? Find if if um, if I'm you, I'm I'm going to get on uh, the local home builders association website or NAHB National Association of Home Builders, and I'm going to look for a contractor that is. CAPS certified, C A P S. Uh, there's a there's three designations, one, two, and three, and basically what that is is in a nutshell, those individuals are certified in aging in place. So we know um, the various things to do because not only do you want to put in a walk in. Uh, shower, but you need grab bars. You need a uh, seat. Y- you need easy access. So look for a contractor that is CAPS certified. C A P S one, two, and three. All right. All Thank you. Yes, you ma'am. You are welcome, Georgia. We hope that works out for you. We hope you get you a nice, pretty shower in there. There you go. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and switch over to Ann in West Tennessee. She um, wanted some advice on a frozen door lock or padlock. Ann, good, good morning. You're on the air. What's going on? Good morning to you guys, and thanks for taking my call. I know it's kind of in a lot of people's distant memory right now, but that, that brutal... Um, a uh, cold spell we had um, the end of January. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. So I wondered what your best advice is for um, our helpful hints or website to visit 
um, if you happen to have a frozen vehicle door lock and or a frozen padlock, uh, neither one of them we needed really had to access. It would have been nice, but one suggestion I, I found online involved a blowtorch, and I didn't mm. want to go down that. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily like a blowtorch. I'll tell you. I, I'll tell you what I do like, and it's real simple. Uh, it's called WD forty. Yeah. Um, yes, it's it's water displacement, and it will because that the lock didn't freeze. Water inside the lock froze. Sure. So. I did find that out. Yes, you're right. Oh goodness. So so it's it's safe for like. Some of the new vehicles, the fancy, you know, remote key things and all that. If that doesn't work, it's still safe. yeah, it's it's not going to hurt to spray WD forty in that in in that in that door handle because what what's what what's happening is it's it's raining and the rain turns to ice and the rain is getting you know in that component. Just spray some WD forty in there prior to. Right, and you know what? I did find one helpful hint online. Someone suggested spray some a little WD forty in there before the cold gets there Correct. and sell it some. Do you think? Yeah, I mean that, I sure. think that's what he. No, yeah. yeah, no, that's exactly what I'm saying. Do it prior to the the huh? uh, the, the the freezing weather. Because it's a water okay. displacement. That's what it does. That's right. It's going right. to move the water away, yeah. so it won't I mean, freeze. You know, years ago. Uh, as a teenager, we all had F one fifties, and we would find the largest puddle of water we could get in, and see how much, how deep we could get our trucks in this water. Well, as soon as the water got in the distributor cap, it, the truck would quit running. So we would yeah. take a we'd take a can of WD forty, spray it in the distributor cap, put it back on, truck fire right up. That's the most so, Mississippi thing absolutely. I've ever. Heard. As a country boy, yeah. you know they do it in Alabama too, Lacey. Don't, <laughs> don't act like that. Don't That's act right. like that. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you all so much. WD forty is a miracle drug. Uh, it really couple. is. Yes, ma'am. It's good. It's good for everything, even arthritis. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> thank you y'all take yes care. ma'am thank you and we hope we hope we helped you out this morning it we are on fire with these phone calls y'all y'all want to take a break or y'all want to keep going let's yeah, go just let's, keep go. Going. let's go let's uh let's go talk to mary in jackson mississippi she's got a question about plaster uh mary you're on the air what's going on this morning thank you i have and i'm living in an old house and i have plaster walls I need them repaired. Some of the spots are falling out and cracks are all around because we had a very hot summer. Mm. So give me some advice of who I can contact. I have not been successful in telephone directories. Mm. I don't know, Jeff. What On plaster, would a painter be able to do that? Ooh, no, uh, you know, plaster is a... Uh, it's a whole different it's animal. It's an art, let me tell you. Um... What are we What are we dealing with? Are we dealing with cracks or? You're dealing with cracks and you're dealing with some spots or holes that have fallen out. They okay, have gotten, okay, uh, okay. Too tight and fallen to so I need to be replastered. Yeah, and plaster. Plaster is a is a dying industry because we just don't do it anymore. Um, I, I think I'm going to find a, a good sheetrock contractor, uh, and I'm going to try to repair it with uh, the the tools and products that we use today, which would be sheetrock mud, um, and, and that's really really your only option. We just don't do a lot of plaster, and and you know it to bring a stucco contractor in that's going to be cost prohibitive. So I would find a good handyman. That has some sheetrock uh, experience, and I, I, I think uh, I, I, I think you will end up with a result that everyone's happy with. Do, are these on the walls or the ceilings, Mary? They are both. Okay. The, the, it's an old house, so it's the walls and and well, most of it is around the wall. I I haven't seen a whole lot of cracks in the ceiling. Right. Yeah. You know, well, we, something else you could think about if you wanted to, and I I did this in uh, in a a room in my house. 
is I had some extensive foundation work done about 20 years ago, and it left some pretty wicked cracks. You know, once the house settled back in, it left these cracks, and I, I stared at them for a while. <laughs> and then what I ended up doing is I ended up putting a bead board, a wood bead board, as an accent wall on that particular wall. And then I painted it a different color than the other walls in the room, and it actually turned out it was stunning. It, it turned out really well. So it, you could uh, put in something over that wall if you wanted to. There's some pretty cool products out there now. Now, if you you're if you want to save the plaster, then Jeff had some awesome uh, ideas for you. If you're open to doing something different, there are some pretty amazing products out there. One of them. Um, now, the beadboard was, I actually put an exterior grade beadboard on the interior of the house because I just liked it better, and it was a little bit more substantial. So that was, I was able to do that myself, and I've been very pleased with it. It's been there for about 20 years now, 20, 25 years. The other thing is that there are some pretty cool um, foam-type products that mimic uh, stone and brick and you can put those up with a screwdriver. And if you wanted to do something like that to kind of accent that wall, that's just a, I mean, it's just an idea. And they cover up where that plaster is because probably if it's coming down, it's going to keep coming down. Yeah. Because patching plaster is, it's an art. There's a lath that's behind it. And if, you, if you're patching, then that patch is always going to be susceptible to falling again. But if you put something over it, then you don't have to worry about it. But just an idea. Do you have any contractors that you can give me a telephone number for? On that something like that, that kind of I, you know, I did it myself. So um, I, I don't know. I mean, any handyman could do something like that, I would imagine. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mary. Hope we helped you out. Let's take one more call this hour. This is Jeremy in Mobile. He says he's got a fun fact about WD-40. Jeremy, tell me your fun fact. All right. This is great, guys. So WD-40 is actually food safe. The main ingredient, took them 40 tries to figure it out, is actually fish oil. So while I would not recommend spraying it in your food, it is non-toxic and can be used for all your machinery in the kitchen and no harm, no foul. I was not I aware of that. I that didn't is, know that either. Fish that oil. Is, uh, yep, that's that's, that, why it's, it's, that's yep, great news. Dis- yeah, water displacement formula 40 is where the, the yeah, name comes from. Yeah. It took them 39 previous tries before they stumbled across fish oil. Nice. And that's what it is. They just aerosolized fish oil oh, and a few, you know, binders in it. That's great. Um, the that, other thing, on the previous call, Miss Mary, I uh, hope she's still listening. If she wants to keep that plaster how it was and make sure that it stays, um, contact the, uh, the Historical Society. I have friends and family that live in, you know, 150, 200-year-old houses, and they won't let you touch the paint without approval, but they can definitely put you on the, the scent of the right kind of artisan that can fix the plaster with lap boards as it was that you know that's a great suggestion contact the historical society yeah, I, like I mean that. That, i love that perfect yeah thank you right. that, that's all i got man y'all have a great afternoon thank you thank you, you so you much too. jeremy um we uh, i'm sorry to our <clears throat> listeners we've had a we've had a weird situation someone some unknown person has burst into the studio <laughs> unprovoked. El- elvis has entered the building <laughs> elvis is in the building La- ladies and gentlemen the one and only jason klein is in this studio right well, now. Hi. Hi. He heard we were talking about injuries on the job. And <laughs> and he's well, got a few there's stories. no more pro than me. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. The man has hurt himself doing things. Right, right. On this show. <laughs> yeah, right. In the middle of talking about injuries. Right, right. Jason, welcome back. How are Thank you? you? I'm I'm doing great. I'm I'm back in town to see friends and see you guys and uh, help support MPB. So well, that's what I'm doing here. It's your favorite place in the world. Why wouldn't you come support us? It is, and the food's free. So <laughs> yeah. there you go. Yeah. Right. I'll buy your lunch, Jason. Yeah. I'll buy your lunch. All right, cool, man. <laughs> There's some Mexican restaurants around here somewhere. Right, we can get Jason right. something. <laughs> Do well, you miss- I have been listening to the show. I love it. It sounds fantastic. I love all the calls. More calls. They're great. Aw, yeah. we have the best callers. I think I'm biased. We do. But I, I think I we have the best so callers. much. Yeah, I know. It's not even it's not even
not even questions. It's people calling in and being like, Pam and Jeff, guess what? I got a little fact for well, you. Well, their suggestions are just all, I mean, the historical society. Yeah. What a, I mean, <laughs> Someone asked me the other day to explain Fix It 101 to them, like what it was. You know, of course you start off and you're like, well, it's kind of a home improvement DIY sure. thing. And then and they're like, yeah, well, what, you know, there's lots of those. What makes it, you know, special or different? And then describing, having to describe you guys being not boring is very difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. How uh, would you describe us, not Jeff? Boring. I mean, well, yeah. We are eclectic. Can we say that on the radio? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's two experts teaching uh, a 28-year-old dummy how to uh, keep your house uh, running. No. That's what this show is. You know what, though? I heard you on uh, last week's show. And I think you got a little bit more in you than you know. Oh, there you Lord. go. Yeah, I do believe so. You've learned some from that daddy of yours. Oh, that that daddy that gets on the roof like you tell him uh-huh. not to. Yeah, I've learned yeah. plenty from him. I yeah. think you could end up with a hammer in your hand before it's all over with. Don't don't wish that on anybody, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it is what an honor to have the man that passed the torch to oh, me. Man, don't use the word honor. I'm just a dude. <laughs> well, you're you're. <laughs> You are not just a dude, Jason. You are the reason I am sitting in this seat. Yay. And, and the yep, reason that's exactly right. And the reason that I hope to sit in this seat for a long time. Cool. Well, sit there. I hope to sell you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of these days, I right. sell. Right. You're be- all for sale. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make I'll make Jason a profit. One of these that's days. Right. Yeah. Oh, Get on. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, man, what what a great show to end with the impeccable Jason Klein. You're going to have to come back and see us more often. As long as you'll say impeccable more often. Impeccable. Oh, right. Impeccable Jason Klein. Yeah. Fix It 101 is a production of MPB Think Radio. Then it's funded by the generous contributions from listeners like you. Our show is produced by me, Lacey Alexander. Our call screener today was Will Pickering. For Pam Pibus and Jeff Salmons, thanks for listening. Thank you to our beautiful board op, Jermaine Flood. Stay tuned for our Wednesday 10 a.m. program, Everyday Tech with Abram Nanny, and join us next Wednesday at 9 for Fix It 101 on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.